my friends and I were at this Italian cafe last night and uh, we really picked out, we splurged on money. Well, and uh, we had a very high bill to pay, but we didn't feel a pinch because uh, we were six of us and we decided to go Dutch. Yes, when I say we decided to go Dutch, I mean we decided to divide the bill into six parts and everybody pays their part, right? So no one feels the pinch. And yes, this is what today's lesson is about, idioms with nationalities and countries, okay? So let's start with the first one, it's all Greek. Now what do you mean by it's all Greek, of course? It is when uh, you can't, you know, understand when you read something or uh, listen to someone say something. So now the other day I was reading this article about politics and I don't know, it just didn't make sense to me. And I was like, what's this? It, it, it's all Greek to me. That means I did not understand a word. So there are times when people talk about certain things and it doesn't click here. You could say, I don't even know what you're talking about. It's all Greek to me. That means you did not understand. Okay, so it's a way of saying, I just don't understand. The next one is go Dutch. Yes, this is what I told you. My friends and I were um, at, a, at this lovely Italian cafe. We picked out and obviously that means we ordered a lot of food and the bill was really, really high. But we didn't feel the pinch because we decided to go Dutch. Now, we mainly use this idiom when you want to say that you share the expenses of a bill. So there are 10 people. Uh, probably you divide the bill uh, by 10, so everybody gets to pay one tenth of the amount. So instead of saying, hey, you pay the bill, and hey, you pay the bill, or I am not paying the bill, so let's just be fair, let's just go Dutch. So you say, hey, let's go Dutch. Or if you use this in the past, you could say, we went Dutch. Okay. That means you share the amount uh, of the bill. So it's mainly used when you want to talk about paying a bill and sharing it equally. All right. Now the next one is Chinese whispers. Well, if you remember, we even played Chinese whispers in school. But uh, the idiom is used when you want to talk about uh, there is some inaccurate information or rumors. Okay, now I'll give an example. So often in companies there are rumors about uh, people dating. Maybe it may, they may not be dating or maybe the manager has an affair with a subordinate and you're not sure. So you feel uh, the manager and our subordinate, they're dating? No, I don't think so. It's all just Chinese whispers that means it's inaccurate information or some rumors you know or the other word we use is grapevine so you just it's just all in the air and people are just going around uh, you know spreading the rumor and that is when you say Chinese whispers so don't believe it it's just Chinese whispers so that means it's inaccurate information or just gossip Well, the next one says talk for England. Now, I'm sure this is something new. Now, talk for in England is an idiom used when uh, you want to say that someone can talk for long hours and hours and hours. So now I'm going to tell you what happened this morning. I got into work about 20 minutes late. Thank God my boss was not there. But uh, when a colleague of mine asked me, hey, Rachna, you're 20 minutes late. And I was like, I happened to meet my college friend, okay, and we got chatting, obviously you meet your friend, you start chatting, and I got delayed because she can talk for England or she talks for England, and that means she can talk for hours and hours. Now that 
is what happened this morning. I couldn't really escape, but I managed to, luckily. But yes, uh, a friend of mine, she talks for England. That means she talks for hours and hours. So use this idiom when you want to describe a person who can talk and continue to talk. Okay, the next one is Dutch courage. Uh, again, we have go Dutch, now we have Dutch courage. Now Dutch courage is uh, when you drink a little alcohol, okay, uh, just to gain a little confidence or that courage to do something. So uh, last night after my friends and I finished uh, dinner at the Italian cafe, we went, for this, we went to this party. It's just a nice social gathering, a place where people hang out. And uh, my friend Daniel, he really liked this uh, cute looking girl, okay, and she was with her set of friends, someone unknown completely. And he wanted to go and ask her, uh, you know, for a dance. He wanted to dance with her. He didn't have the courage to, he was a little nervous, you know, because, uh, I don't know, he was just nervous. And he said, what if she says no? So finally, he decided to have a shot of alcohol, uh, just a shot uh, for Dutch courage, so he could uh, go and ask her to you know, ask her for a dance. So when you take a little alcohol to give you that little confidence and courage, you do it, um, obviously you want to do something. So when you want that confidence and you have that alcohol for confidence and courage, that means you touch courage. All right, now the next one is pardon my French. Now there are times we are irritated, annoyed. We um, kind of become rude, arrogant, and sometimes we tend to use swear words. Not a nice thing. So we say pardon my French when you want to excuse yourself for uh, being rude or for saying something that is not well accepted, and especially for a swear word. So if I'm annoyed with a friend of mine, well, I don't get annoyed, but just for example, if I'm annoyed with a friend of mine, I say, you know, she always makes us wait. She's such a beep, okay? So then I say, oops, pardon my French. It's just to excuse yourself and you use a swear word, especially for a swear word. Okay, that's how you use the idiom. Well, in the first place, don't use swear words, but sometimes when you do, excuse yourself by saying, pardon my French. The next one is the Mexican standoff. Um, well, this is one of my favorite idioms with the nationality and country. A Mexican standoff is uh, typically a business situation, a business, uh, maybe, you know, a meeting where two parties can never come to an agreement. There is always something that uh, they cannot settle down to but, or cannot conclude uh, to something or to, you know, reach a consensus. So that is the time you say a Mexican standoff. Well, uh, this happens in most of the business meetings, especially when there's negotiation or, uh, you know, Two parties have different views and they are just unable to conclude it to one or reach a consensus. And that is the time you say, hmm, there seems to be a Mexican standoff at the meeting or, uh, um, you know, it appears that there is a Mexican standoff in this business meeting. And that means two people or two parties can never come to an agreement. Well, friends, so remember when you have something where there is uh, still too much between two people and not able to reach a consensus, that means there is a Mexican standoff. 
The next one is Slow Boat to China. Well, this idiom comes from an American song. Okay, it's a very famous song, Slow Boat to China. Now, obviously, it's very clear. Slow means something that is very, takes long to happen. So there are certain processes, there are certain people who are very slow or certain new developments are slow. So when you say slow boat to China means something takes too long to happen or it, it's just too slow. Now the other day I was waiting for uh, one of the architectures to submit a plan and he said, I'll give it to you, I'll give it to you. And that's all he said for one week. And I realized, oh, I was just taking the slow boat to China while, uh, you know, as of I was waiting for his uh, proposal to be submitted. So, waiting for the architecture was like taking a slow boat to China. So, when something takes too long, there are procedures, sometimes new developments in our countries or anything that's new that is taking time to come into existence, uh, means you have taken the slow boat to China. And the last one is um, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. This is typically used for a company where there are too many managers, people at a high level, but uh, there are hardly any people who do the actual work, who do the execution or the implementation. And that is the time you say, now for example, there is a company that is not doing too well and we're wondering why because we have so many managers, we have well qualified people, we have hard working employees. And that is, time, that is the time we could say there seems to be a problem with that company because there are too many chiefs and not enough Indians. That means uh, too many managers, too many, I mean, too many people at a higher, uh, you know, designation or authority, but very few people to do the actual work. So go ahead and use this idiom for a company who is full of, which has a lot of managers, but less people to do the work. Alright friends, so these are the basic idioms you could use and these idioms have nationalities or countries in them. So go ahead and use them in your daily conversation. I'll be back soon with a new lesson. Till then, take care and bye.